Hello and welcome. My name is Maria Stokes, and today I will be introducing you to Dr. France Cordova, former NASA Chief Scientist and former Director of the National Science Foundation. Let's jump in. France Cordova was named after the country she was born in, where her parents worked in relief efforts after World War II. Her father was Mexican-American and her mother Irish-American. Her father's work brought her family from France to Germany before they returned to the U.S., where she was raised in California with her 11 siblings. France Cordova found physics at a young age and obtained permission to take a high school physics class, which was reserved for boys at her school. However, in college, she was more drawn to the humanities. France Cordova graduated cum laude from Stanford with a degree in English, and she began a career in journalism. It was only after she learned about the Apollo 11 lunar landing and neutron stars that she decided to pursue physics. We will now hear from Dr. France Cordova herself about this part of her life in a video from Nautilus Magazine's Spark of Science series. I saw the moon landing of uh, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, and I just thought that was amazing. The whole space program was starting to open up. I thought, what possibilities? And then almost exactly the same time, I saw a special on public television about neutron stars. And they had been hypothesized some years earlier. On the show, some scientists from MIT were describing what it was like to be near a neutron star and the amount of energy liberated if you dropped a marshmallow on it. Well, that, that got me, that marshmallow <laughs> falling onto the neutron star and liberating all that energy. So the very next day, I took a bus down Mass Ave to MIT and I knocked on the door of one of the people that was in the show and he was amused and uh, talked to me and he said, so what are you really interested in? And I said, well, I'm really interested in, in the cosmos and understanding the universe better. And, and by the end of the summer, three professors there all wrote letters to the administration to admit me as a graduate student at large. But I was really wanting to go back to California for personal reasons and I went to Caltech and I did the same thing, I knocked on doors. So they admitted me after a year as a graduate student in physics. I was in that first wave of young people who were X-ray astronomers. We were launching rockets from White Sands, New Mexico, and then the first satellites were being launched. I mean, in the end, you have to believe a prediction enough to go after it and just see if it's there or not. You might be an amazing new discovery and you're the first person to see it. As the video said, Dr. France Cordova completed graduate studies at Caltech. Her dissertation concerned X-ray systems. After earning her PhD, she took a job at Los Almos, where she worked on rocket launches. In addition, she investigated strong gravitational fields and encouraged multi-wavelength observations of astronomical events. After Los Almos, she went on to work for NASA. She was co-principal investigator for the Optical Monitor Digital Processing Unit on ESA's X-ray Multi-Mirror Mission, which is spaceborne on XMM Newton, which is shown on the slide. She became NASA Chief Scientist and served in this role from 1993 to 1996. In this position, she worked to keep centers open and retained research funding. Dr. France Cordova has also been committed to education. She taught and administratively led at several universities, serving as the president of both Purdue University and the University of California, Riverside. At these institutions, she advanced research, encouraged interdisciplinary collaboration, and developed programs in health and medicine at both Purdue and UC Riverside. In 2014, Dr. France Cordova became the first Latina director of the National Science Foundation. 
She was director during many exciting astrophysical developments, including the first detection of gravitational waves by LIGO Virgo and the first image of a black hole by the Event Horizon Telescope. With the completion of her directorship in 2020, she looks forward to having time to write. Now we will listen to some advice from Dr. France Cordova. We've lots of young people as well as people of my great age here today. Um, do you have sort of tips for them? You know, people who are, you know, want to reach for the sky and, you know, are very ambitious to, to do exciting things, whether it be in space or in science or in technology. Sure. Well, the, the first thing to share is that how many of you have read Lord of the Rings? That's so, quite a few. So Tolkien uh, has um, uh, a, a famous expression, all who wander are not lost. And I really always remember that because I think you can be a wanderer and explorer and not be at all lost. You're just looking for different experiences. And that's kind of the story of my life. It was a very unusual uh, pathway, and uh, as, you've, as you've heard. And so some People are born and they uh, absolutely know at the moment of birth that they're going to become uh, an astronaut or uh, an industry leader or a lawyer or a doctor or something. And others uh, like me have uh, a varied career path. And so the, the first tip I would give is just that, um, just enjoy what you're doing at the moment and, uh, and learn everything you can about it and go deeply into it because your, your passion and your enthusiasm will be recognized and people will um, respond to it and then think of you for other positions. The following sources were used in the creation of this presentation. This project was prepared by the Center for History of Physics and the Niels Bohr Library and Archives at the American Institute of Physics.